Hello, thank you for having me here. It's such a pleasure. Uh, my name is Phil Gordon, and I am the CEO and founder of a Seattle-based startup called Chatbox. And uh, before I, uh, Chatbox is about four years old. Uh, before I started the company uh, four years ago, I actually spent 10 years as a professional poker player. And people say, oh, well, why the heck did you go from playing professional poker to running a software startup? Well, it's actually quite simple. Uh, in poker, my job every day for 10 years was to find the richest, dumbest person I could possibly find and take their money. <laughs> yes. In startups, it's actually quite different. My job now is to find the richest, smartest people in the world and help them make money. Big, big difference and, and much more fulfilling. Um, unfortunately, as a startup founder, you don't get the opportunity to be on television very much like I did in the world of professional poker. But it's such a pleasure to be here in Brazil. It's my first trip to Brazil and it won't be my last. Thank you again to Superlogica for having me here. Today I want to talk to you about a once-in-a-decade transformation that's taking place around the world. And this transformation is really about the move from smartphones and apps into messaging-based experiences. Typically, you might have heard the word chatbot, but I think that's a little simplistic. Uh, about, uh, well, 40 years ago, we went from website client, or from clients to websites 10 years later, and then to apps about 10 years later. And in this decade, starting in about 2018, 2017, for the next 10 years, I personally believe that this will all be about messaging. And, and why will it be about messaging? Well, messaging is the killer app. And if you look at the stats, they're really quite amazing. In the United States alone, there are 5 billion text messages sent every single day. 99% of US-based consumers use text messaging daily. And even uh, something that's not on this list, a text message that is sent will be opened and read about 97% of the time within three minutes of receipt. This is the killer app. This is how everyone communicates. And I believe that this is how everyone will communicate with brands and with companies for service and for sales and for marketing for the foreseeable future. We also are at a, a real inflection point here across not only text messaging, but across the other key technologies that really will drive this, this uh, drive towards personalization, or towards personalization and messaging. And at the top here, we have the web-based technologies with HTML5, uh, giving you very, very powerful tools on the mobile device uh, with no download, no install. We have the LG, uh, the 4G and LTE speeds, and soon we're gonna have the 5G speeds, which will be absolutely amazing uh, for these experiences. We also have the cloud services, so, you know, uh, AWS and Google and Azure from Microsoft and Oracle has one now, but this has made it really easy to deploy very powerful solutions at very low cost. And then we have the rise of the messaging channels. Now, SMS has been around for, you know, 20 plus years, but the RCS and the Apple business chat that's coming in the course of the next couple of years are going to do amazing things for this messaging ecosystem. And then finally, and very importantly, we have the rise of artificial intelligence. Now, many believe that Seattle is the artificial intelligence capital of the world. I personally believe that we have Microsoft there, we have Amazon there, uh, we have some just amazing technology being built in Seattle, and, and our company is based in Seattle and gets the benefit of that entire ecosystem that's being built there. But these technologies, particularly around natural language processing, Amazon Lex, Google Dialog Flow, Wit.ai, all of these natural language processing uh, systems are becoming more and more robust 
over the course of time. And I believe it's the convergence of the web-based technologies, the great speed of 5G, the cloud-based services at stuff like Amazon Lex, the RCS and the channels that are being, that are the channel capabilities that are being lit up, as well as the artificial intelligence engines. All five of these things are, all five of these keys are really converging quite rapidly. And when they do, over the course of the next few years, you're going to be able to do amazing things with your mobile phone simply by chatting with a bot. And what will you be doing with that bot? Well, I believe that you will be experiencing something that we call hyper-personalization. You might not have heard this term before. Hyper-personalization is using data and artificial intelligence to provide personalized experiences across the entire customer journey, starting at the sales and marketing, all the way through fulfillment and, and then into service. This hyper-personalized experience treats a single customer as an individual. Not every single uh, messaging experience will be the same across every customer. We'll use all the data that we know about you, all that data that we've been collecting or that these brands have been collecting about you over the course of time will be used to deliver a, a personalized solution for a single individual at a single moment in time. And it will be very, very exciting. And companies that are, will do this will see amazing results. I have some stats on, on here. I won't read them all. Uh, but I will point out to a couple of things that we've seen with some of our early customers that have deployed hyper-personalized solutions using, our, using the Chatbox platform. We have, a we have a company that is using text messaging uh, early in their sales process. These personalized text messages sent to prospective customers. They are seeing a 30% improvement over their previous non-texting uh, booking engine. 30% increase in sales. And that increase happened nearly overnight as soon as they deployed the solution. These personalized messaging are not just for service. I know everyone here thinks, oh, chatbot, I'm just gonna use it for service and customer support. That is not the case at all. In fact, most of the great use cases, the really high quality use cases are used up the customer funnel. Okay, so what is it gonna take for your brand to deliver a hyper-personalized messaging solution at scale. It's gonna take the combination of six key technologies all glued together. You're gonna to have to do all six of these things really, really well in order to deliver these personalized solutions to your customers. And I'm gonna talk you through each one of these and show you some examples. So the first is channels. Now the key is to build once and be able to deploy to any channel without changing the experience. So you might select at, for, the, for one of your channels, SMS, and I strongly suggest that you do, particularly if you have US facing customers. But I know in Brazil, WhatsApp is extraordinarily popular, right? Everyone use WhatsApp? Oh boy, yeah. As soon as they come out with a bot uh, SDK, which I believe will be this year, uh, you will be able to deliver these same solutions, these same experiences in WhatsApp that you do in SMS. But the key is to build one time and be able to deploy to any channel. That's one of the things that you're gonna have to master in order to be able to deliver these solutions at scale. Now the second is bots. There are essentially two types of bot engines that you can select from. One is called a slot intent framework or an intent slot framework. And this is like Amazon Lex or Google Dialogflow are very good examples of this type of engine. And what this engine will allow you to do is you'll determine the customer's intent. The customer will say something to your bot. And then the intent slot framework will allow you to ask follow-up questions one after the other. 
So in this example, I need directions and the bot could ask, well, where are you coming from? And then, are you driving or walking? Right? Those are follow-up questions. Those are the slots that need to be filled in order to fulfill that intent. The other type of engine that you might need to choose is called an FAQ engine. And, and the FAQ engines do not have the ability to answer, fo answer follow-up questions or to ask follow-up questions. They are simply matching a user's phrase to a specified intent and giving you the answer. This is a typical FAQ uh, sort of interaction. So these are the two types of bot engines that you're gonna need to choose from. However, and, and most of the people that are thinking about these solutions, they think that they need to go with the intent slot framework, right? They wanna ask follow-up questions. However, that has a big problem. And it's a massive problem, and it's a problem that's not going away. And if you choose to, to think about uh, building one of these messaging applications, I would strongly suggest you listen intently for the next five minutes, because the solution that you build simply won't work. Right? It's not going to work. And why is it not going to work? Let's take a typical uh, intent. I would like to book an appointment. My bot needs to ask the first name. So it says, well, what's your first name? And I'm going to give an answer, but it's a little unclear here, but I actually spelled my name wrong. I added one extra L, P-H-I-L-L. -L. Okay, and then the bot says, well, what's your last name? And I try to correct the bot and I say, sorry, Phil, thinking that it's going to be able to correct the previous entry. But now the bot thinks my name is Phil, sorry, Phil. And, and I know you're laughing, and, I know, and it is funny, but this is a huge problem in natural language processing, and it is not going away. The, the real problem is that natural language processing-based structured data capture is seriously flawed, and it will make your bot, any bot that you build, fail miserably. Another good example here, so I did a recent uh, test against the two best uh, bot engines on the market, Amazon Lex and Google Dialogflow. And I just had a simple question. What time would be good for a call? And I ran 37 different possible responses to that simple question. And you'd think after the billions of dollars that have been spent trying to solve this problem, that Amazon Lex and Google Dialogflow would be really good at answering this simple question, at filling what we call the time slot. All it's trying to do is take the next thing that I say and figure out what time I mean, right? Humans would get this right 100% of the time, right? 100% of the time. The bots, as you can see, are still miserable Absolutely miserable. Amazon Lex only got 41% of the possible things that I put in. The problem is, what time is good for a call? Well, a human may answer, how about after lunch? And good luck getting a bot to use natural language processing to figure out that that means 3 o'clock here in Brazil or more likely one o'clock if you're in the United States. We seem to eat a little bit earlier than, than you on almost every meal. It's a little crazy. Um, but this is another example of the big problem that bots have, okay? So it's even worse. Now, this is where my role as a poker player comes in, right? So I'm gonna do a little math for you. Let's say that we had a bot engine that did 80%, that was able to collect, to, that was able to take that first slot and with 80% accuracy determine the right answer, right? What time is good for a call? It's gonna get 80% of those correct. But then it has to ask a second question. What date would you like your appointment to be? And it's gonna only get, I'm gonna give it a benefit of the doubt, it'll get 80% of those questions right too. Well, the problem is it's a, it's a combined probability. In order to fulfill this intent, 
I've got to get the first question right and I have to get the second question right. And 80% times 80% is only 64%. So already, even with two simple slots, even with two simple ideas that I need to collect from the customer to fulfill this request, my bot will only succeed 64% of the time. And if you add a third question into this flow, your bot is now going to fail 50% of the time. And this is the big reason that bots today stink. You can't think of a bot that you use on a daily basis that solves any major problem for you. And the reason is the bots are being using, or the bots are using natural language processing to collect structured data. And this is just simply not going to work. Okay, so no one's gonna build a bot now, right? Yeah, well we still, we still have to move to messaging because that's what the customers want. The customers want a more personalized experience delivered over a messaging channel. So we don't have a choice. As companies and brands, we have to deliver to the consumer's expectations. So how are we gonna do it? How are we gonna do it? We are going to use an app-like experience to collect the structured data. And, and this is a good example of that same booking appointment with an app inserted in the middle, right? So we use the bot to determine intent. And the intent is the same, I'd like to book an appointment. And then the key is that we use an app-like experience that people are already used to, that where we can validate the data where we can structure the data, where we can provide rich uh, media and calculation capability. And we insert this app into the conversational flow to collect that data. And then we take that data and we ship it back to the bot. But when it gets shipped back to the bot, we know that it's perfect. We know that we have all the data exactly right. There's no guessing anymore and there's no I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Can you phrase that a different way that is typical in the bots that you see today? And, and so some, we call these, uh, in our platform, we call these apps instant apps. And the instant apps, all of these are all examples of instant apps that are used to collect structured data for some of our customers. So here, I need help resetting my wireless router. Okay, great, here is the wizard for helping you set, reset your wireless router, right? And you can scan the barcode of the, uh, uh, of the serial number and we can walk you step by step through resetting your wireless router. I need to order more spices, great, here's your order form, right? With a calculation possibility for showing you the total. I need to buy a booster pack for Fortnite. Uh, my sons do that way too much. Um, uh, and, and here we can provide a payment, and I need to send more information. I, I want to see more information on this house, right? But when, this, when we deliver these app-like experiences, we are collecting that structured data, and we're sending it back to the bot in perfectly validated, perfectly structured form. And the key is to make these super easy to build, because a lot of engineers in the audience, not many, okay. Um, that's okay. If you gave an engineer this app and you said, oh, I need you to build this app for me, and, and it needs to work on 99% of the mobile devices, and I need the data to be persistent, and I need it to be secure, they're going to tell you about eight weeks, and they'll be wrong. It'll take them 12, but engineers always underestimate right? It'll take them 12, and then you're going to have a maintenance nightmare on top of it. So the key here is to make them super easy to build, and, and build and then deploy into these messaging solutions. So this is actually a, a photo of our instant app builder in, in our platform. And these can be dynamic. Uh, they can, uh, when a user types something, they can run it through a back-end database or do validation and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and they can actually perform calculations like you saw on the order form as well. So these instant apps solve the critical problem 
that bot-based solutions have today. Your other choice, if you don't want to use our instant apps and you still want to build messaging, you're going to have to build some microsites. You're going to have to get an engineer and you're going to have to essentially build that form or build that little application that you need to collect that appointment data or uh, to collect that payment and you're going to need to sit, sit that microsite inside of that conversational experience and it's going to take you a very long time to do that and it will be very expensive. But it is an option. Where is all this going? Well, in the future, and it's not the too distant future, maybe a year or two out, right? It's not today. But in the future, to deliver hyper-personalized experiences, you're going to need to generate these apps on the fly. Every app will be different for each individual customer. You, sir, are a VIP customer, right? You fly only first class, and you like window seats, right? And you have a frequent flyer number, and you want to rent a car, and you have a car rental at your destination ready, right? You, sir, are not a VIP. You only fly coach, right? You have a middle seat. You don't have a car and you are going just there and back on the same day, but you need a driver to pick you up at the airport when you arrive at your destination. It should be clear from these two cases that the app-like experience that is delivered to these individuals as a result of them saying something like, I need to change my flight, the app that will be delivered to each of those people is very different. It will contain different information it will contain different preferences, right? And being able to build on demand these app-like experiences and deliver them into the messaging channel is what will drive an unbelievably strong and sticky user experience, a hyper-personalized experience for your customers that will generate a lot of revenue, give you lots of goodwill, and keep your, com keep your customers extraordinarily loyal. So I believe that the future is all about using an AI backend, what we call the generative AI. So we're gonna take all of the profile data, all of the data in our SaaS applications, all of the data in our business logic, right? All of the APIs that our companies possess, and we're gonna feed all of that information into the generative AI in order to build on demand an app just for you or another app just for you. And these apps will be delivered into the messaging channel of the customer's choice. That data will be captured and then synced back to our back end as well as fed into machine learning algorithms that will make the whole thing better the next time. This is where things are going and one to two years out. As I said before, we need to take that data and we need to sync it to our backend systems, right? This does, it will do you no good to build a bot that doesn't connect to your backend systems. Essentially, if you do that, you will be building joke of the day. Please tell me a joke and then the bot will tell you a joke, but you will not be able to do anything meaningful at an enterprise scale without connecting to your backend systems and to your CRM. And you're going to need an agent tool. And the agent tool is going to be useful in situations where the bot gets lost. And this is going to happen. It doesn't matter how good the AI is. It doesn't matter how good the natural language processing engine is. Your bot will get lost. And you are going to need the ability to take that conversation and give it to a human. And when you give it to the human, you need to give it to the human with all of the context of the previous conversation with the bot, including, very importantly, all of the information that was captured in the apps, right? They need to be able to see, the humans need to be able to see in line with the rest of that conversational history, all of that information in order to be able to take over the conversation. And if you're doing this well, you're going to need analytics to show how it all works together. How many, how many trips got rebooked today? How many people needed a new car? 
Uh, how many people tried to book a hotel through our platform, right? You're gonna need to essentially have an analytics engine that takes all of these conversations and feeds them into a central dashboard where you can work to ensure that the solution that you're providing to your customers is robust and working well. And if you're capable of gluing all of these things together, these six key ingredients, building once and deploying to any channel, finding a natural language bot engine like Amazon Lex or Google Dialogflow, and stitching those two things together, and then combining it with the instant app capability for the capture of structured data. Why? Why do you need instant apps? Because natural language processing for structured data will never work. It will never work. And a bunch of you in this room over the course of the next few years are going to be tasked with delivering messaging solutions to your customers. And when you are tasked with that project, please remember this because you will spend an enormous amount of time and money trying to build a natural language processing engine that collects structured data and you will, not, it, you will not get it to work, I promise you. You're going to need some way to collect structured data. Whether you build microsites or you use the, the widget kind of capability in the platforms like Facebook Messenger or you use our instant apps, it's critical for you to understand that the natural language processing engines will not be capable of collecting structured data. You're gonna have to hook all of that information up into your CRMs, into the APIs of your choice. You're gonna need to provide a rich agent tool that has the context of the previous conversation as well as all of the structured data that was captured. And you're need, gonna need to surface all of that information into an analytics engine. And if you put all six of these things together, you're gonna be able to deliver that world-changing experience that all of your customers want. They all want to be talking to your brand in messaging. They want to use SMS to ask you questions. No one wants to call you, right? Everyone hates calling on the phone. They want to use messaging to talk to your brand. In order to provide that solution for sales, for marketing, for service, you're going to need to stitch these six things together. And if you do, you're gonna get all of the benefits that I outlined on the previous slide. 30% greater bookings, extraordinarily much higher loyalty and, and net promoter scores. You're going to be able to differentiate yourself from your competitors if you're capable of putting all six of these things together. Thank you again for having me in Brazil. It's such an honor to be here. If you want to see some of this in action, I'll be around for the next few hours. It'll be impossible to find me because I'm so short. <laughs> but I'll be walking around. I'd be happy to talk further. Thank you again to Superlogica for having me. My name is Phil Gordon. My company is chatbox.com. Thank you.